I spent the past two weeks analyzing Platinum gameplay on my second channel and playing matches in Platinum lobbies to learn all of the weaknesses and mistakes that make Plats, well, Plat. And in this video, I'm gonna share all of that with you. First, improving your offense, and then your defense. By the end of this video, you will be a Platinum God. Oh no, wait, you'll be Diamond. Or, I don't know, you might just be slightly better at the game. The main thing I noticed during my time in Plat is how often this situation happens. My opponent launches their attack, I save it, and then they immediately turn around and go all the way back to their own goal, leaving me and the ball alone on the ground. This is something that honestly doesn't happen very much in Diamond and above. Players generally press higher upfield to put pressure on you, and force you into making a mistake, or they try to 50 the ball past you. But in Plaid, the most common method of defense seems to be picnicking. Now, I'll talk about why picnicking is a terrible defensive strategy during the next part of this video about defense, but for now, we're focusing on offense. And for offense in Plat, we basically just need to become masters of countering the picnic. So we're down on the ground with our opponent picnicking in goal, or at least just giving us way too much space. And obviously, our goal is to take the ball from here and put it in here. But how can we do that when there's a full-time goalie just sitting there waiting to save our shot? Well, in short, we must get good at solo plays. We must get good at those situations where we are in sole possession of the ball. Where we have complete freedom to try to take the ball and put it in the goal. It sounds like a great position to be in, right? But as most of you probably know, in actuality, they are super easy to mess up. It's just way too much pressure. Well, I have two pieces of advice for you to help you with your solo plays. The first is to use a variety of mechanics. If once you go for an aerial play, then take a long range gold shot. Next time, don't just do the same thing, fake the gold shot and instead take the ball down to the ground for a ground play. Don't get into the habit of using the same plays over and over with a single opponent because then you'll be super easy to read. Mix things up, throw in fakes as often as possible, and you'll eventually catch your opponent out and score a banger. And the second piece of advice is that when you do reach the final stage of your play where you're about to take the shot, do not, I repeat, do not flip towards the ball and hope for the best. You want to prioritize being safe as much as possible. So use a gold shot or a purple shot which pushes you away from the ball and allows you to get back in defense. Don't use a front flip, or you might just find yourself not scoring a goal, but getting scored on. Okay, so that's how to overcome the picnic defense, but what do we do when we're actually defending ourselves? Should we just picnic as well? Okay, now it's time to talk about defense. As I said in the last section, the most common type of defense in Plat is picnicking. Now, it won't come as any shock to you when I say that this defensive strategy is utter garbage, and I highly recommend you never do this in 1v1s. In 2v2s, there's always time for a good picnic every now and then, but in 1s, no, almost never. The problem with picnicking is that you're giving control of the play over to your opponent, which is fine if the ball is around their half or around the middle, but if it's right outside your own goal, that's a super high risk position to be in there. Like, why would you make a challenge here when you could instead make a challenge all the way over here, away from your goal? And that's exactly what my advice is. Instead of picnicking in goal and then challenging the ball from here, challenge it upfield. One of my favorite and most highly recommended ways of challenging the ball upfield is to use fakes to force your opponent into making a play. Often, you'll even force them into just straight up giving you the ball like this. And if nothing else, you'll at least put pressure on them to make a play, which can help increase the chances they'll make a mistake. Basically, pressure equals mistakes. So use a lot of fakes and use them upfield. 
However, don't just use one type of fake, like the simple joystick fake. Use some of the other fakes that I covered in my most common mistakes video, like the jumping fake. My personal favourite is the jumping ground fake, which is so good because of the jumping sound it makes when you do it. I often use this one when my opponent is going up for a high ball and expects an aerial challenge from me. Then I'll throw in a jumping fake to confuse them. So whilst this is my recommended strategy, it's not 100% perfect, and there are two vulnerabilities that I want you to be aware of. In short, because your goal is undefended, it opens you up to getting scored on via long shots, as well as those open net situations where the ball is running up your back wall. So I have two tips to help you avoid getting scored on in these two situations. Starting with long shots, my recommendation is that you save your boost as much as possible. Something I see a lot of plats doing in defense is floating in the air like this, using all of their boost to try to preempt and block any incoming shots. So don't do this. Instead, stay on the ground for as long as possible and do what's called shadow defending. This is where you follow the play back towards your own goal and keep enough distance between yourself and the ball to be ready for the hardest shot. It sounds easy, but in reality, it's really difficult, so make sure you practice it a lot in casual matches. And for the open net situation where the ball is running back towards your goal, one of the safest ways to get out of these situations is by jumping over the ball, landing on the wall, and then launching your clear from there. And this is actually my main recommended method. However, my tip for these is to delay this jump until as late as possible. The reason for the delay is that you don't want your opponent to know what exactly you're going to do. Whether you're going to follow the ball up the wall and maybe go for an air dribble, or if you'll smash it up the wall with a pinch. Or maybe my recommended one and jump over the ball to block it. So you've got three options, and if you delay this jump until the very last moment, you stop them from being able to prepare for which one you're going to do. And in some cases, if you do it late enough, they'll think you're going to go up the wall, and they'll jump up to intercept. At which point, you just clear it straight under them. Okay, so those are all the tips I've got for this video. However, I recently made another video about the five most common mistakes that all players make, and it contains some incredibly useful tips that will definitely help platinum ranks and below. So I highly recommend you go watch that one next if you haven't already. The link is in the video description. And come join the Mogs Discord server if you wanna hang out with me and other Mogs viewers. Check out my second channel if you wanna see me play Sideswipe, Rocket League, and other games with live commentary and become a MOGS member if you want to get access to special perks like playing matches with me and replay analysis by me. And like the video if you liked it, dislike it if not, subscribe for more videos like this as well as a whole bunch of other Rocket League and Rocket League Sideswipe content. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.